like to kickstart your financial goals for 2023? Would you like to give your financial goals the biggest and best opportunity for success for 2023? Are you ready for a complete financial reset that could actually help you achieve your financial goals so much sooner? Well, if your answer is yes, I have the perfect fun financial challenge for you right now. That's right, everyone. Frugal February is back for its eighth year in a row. Good morning, everyone. I hope that you are well. I hope that you had a fantastic weekend. You got to recharge your batteries, you got a reset, and you are ready for the week ahead. Now, of course, as always, and you listen to any of my content or hear it, please know that it is always general advice only. Everything I make for you is for educational purposes. It's never product advice, strategic advice, or personal advice. So I highly recommend connecting with a financial planner, even though I am one myself, and actually talking to them about your financial situation, your personal, unique financial goals, and get a financial plan in place. All right, so as I said, for the eighth consecutive year, Frugal February is back. The month where I am the world's biggest tight ass, leaving no frugal financial stone unturned. I look at every single money saving hack, strategy, idea, solution that you could possibly imagine. And during the month of February, I watched my savings account grow and hopefully flourish. And of course, with all of the money that I save during Frugal February, I put towards my own financial goals, which is, of course, the $1,000 project. Now, my $1,000 project, as I said, it's been going for, it's gonna be its eighth year this year, which is quite incredible. And I just checked the portfolio yesterday and it's actually worth $243,000. Yep, a diversified, share portfolio and not that that really matters what the value of that portfolio is but last financial year it paid me a passive income of over sixteen thousand dollars now yes of course i will disclose it has a very small conservatively managed margin loan attached to that portfolio but it's set on a principal and interest basis so it's slowly very slowly and steadily coming down over time and as you guys know i reinvest all of those dividends and the, I take the equivalent of what that passive income is after taxes and expenses and donate that to World Vision. Anyway, enough about the $1,000 project. That's in another podcast, which I will link in the podcast notes. What I want to talk to you about today is Frugal February because it is a brilliant, fun financial challenge, which is really valuable this time of the year because we're coming off the back of an incredibly expensive period, Christmas. New Year's, uh, where we are buying presents, we are traveling around, we might be going on holiday, we might be out and about socializing a lot more, paying for Ubers and taxis and air tickets and buses and trains. We also might be maybe consuming more alcohol than we normally would. We might be buying more special food for entertaining or turning up to other people's homes. Uh, we might be uh, shopping the Boxing Day sales where we may have had a bit of a financial blowout. Let, let's be honest, it's all about taking ownership and being accountable on Sugar Mama TV. And there's no judgment here. It's all about accepting it, owning it and drawing it a line in the sand, learning and rising above it so that we can become smarter, more informed, educated, but also, of course, mindful with our money. Now, okay, as I said, Frugal February, in a nutshell, is where I am really, really tight with my money. It's essentially a financial fast or a no spend month. Every time I stop myself from spending money or find a way to save money, I immediately transfer that money into a separate dedicated savings account, which I don't touch. I let it build up over the month of February, which is, thank goodness, 28 days. And at the end of that period, I see how much money is there. And ideally, I can buy some more shares if that's the case. Now, as I mentioned, I have a love-hate relationship with this challenge because 
to be honest, I'm more about manifesting money and abundance. And I believe we live in a limitless world. I'm actually not someone that is particularly frugal. However, I can be very frugal. I can be extremely frugal when I need to. But this is a great way to reset, to come back down to earth, to get regrounded. As I said, a complete financial reset when it comes to our money, especially after Let's be honest, it cannot feel good when you're spending lots of money and you feel like you're sort of spinning out of control and you don't really know where things are up to and who you might owe money to or what your budget is up to, or what expenses you've got coming in. This is where we take back control, take a bit of a breather, get to look at where we stand, set some important foundations and goals and boundaries and even financial strategies down and draw that line in the sand and then move on for bigger and better things in our lives and really feel like we're getting back on track with our finances. And as I said, potentially even leapfrog a few uh, obstacles and goals and challenges along the way because we've saved up so much money from doing frugal February. All right, I want to quickly run you through why I do love frugal February. As I said, love, hate, but deep down it is very, very powerful. Let me explain why. As I said, it's a complete total reset. You get back to the basics of your finances. At the end of the day, my wealthiest clients, financial clients, planning clients that is, are the ones who know their living expenses. They have their living expenses under control. They, what's in there, they really value. What they don't value is not in there. And they are at complete harmony with their living expenses. They really respect it. It's, it's, it's a reciprocal energy, you could almost say. We also get through, through frugal February is to strip away any toxic habits that have maybe snuck in, particularly over the last couple of months. As I said, maybe you had a bit of a, a splurge during the Boxing Day sales. Perhaps you're still splurging. Perhaps you've been spending way too much money whining and dining in all these restaurants and all these bars and, you, and or maybe you've been like just signing up to all these different courses and you're like whoa what's going on um where, where are all these new expenses and things that i've signed up to and subscriptions and memberships and programs and everything that we can do so easily so easily do because we are just being jammed with so much marketing all the time we also get to from frugal February, and this is right is the meat of it we get to strip back and quit all the bs excuses and so-called rewards. I will admit I am so guilty of this. I will be like, oh, I'm too tired to do my budget or oh, I really just don't want to look at my savings account right now or the mortgage. I just like you can just push away because it seems too overwhelming and hard or I will go and reward myself with um, a, a purchase that maybe wasn't in my budget or I wasn't yet ready to go and buy. That's about you know really looking at what's going on here. What am I doing? Does this serve me? Uh, does this help me? Is it positively aligned to my goals? So we really get to just expose the, the naughties within us and fix those naughties and not beat us up or be mean about us or punish of ourselves, but just go, all right, that's what I, that's my naughty me I need to be aware of and I'm going to fix that so it doesn't happen again or if I, it comes up again, I can, I'm aware of it, I catch it and I can fix it. So just cutting away the BS uh, and the excuses really that hold us back from really not achieving our financial goals at a, at a rate and level that we are really worthy of. We also get to really see what we value. This is the problem with when I've done Frugal February in the past is I've made myself stop spending things that I value. And that was why I kind of got frustrated with Frugal February. But the great thing is when you do Frugal February, because you just, just for 28 days, you just stop as much as you possibly can. You get to fall in love and reappreciate those particular expenses that are really important to you. Perhaps you love going and buying a coffee in the morning on your way to work. That's something you discover by quitting for Frugal February to save $5 a day and you really miss it during that period, but you're, obviously you're saving $5 a day, which let's be honest is quite a lot of money because it quickly and easily adds up. But go, by going through that process where you stop it and pause it, you actually realize it's a beautiful ritual that you really love. It's part of your morning routine and you get to maybe listen to a podcast or listen to some meditation or affirmations or do some visualization work while enjoying your favorite coffee at your favorite local cafe. And it feels really good supporting a local com your local community. That's good. By stopping doing that, it makes you, I guess, peels back the layers and you can really see what you truly value. And of course, at the same time, what you don't, what is complete and utter wastage in your life. And that brings me to my next point. We get to really expose 
and remove that financial wastage, which is incredibly empowering. It feels, it's a little bit euphoric. It's a bit of a, um, an aphrodisiac when you go through your budget and you're like, whoa, was I spending money on that? I do not value that. That is going. I've just freed up $50 per month from my budget. I can't believe I've been letting that go for so long. I'm guilty of one particular expense in my account that I just recently discovered. It felt so good. I was like, yep, you know what? Because $50 a month, is $600 a year. Like that is a lot of money. I would definitely like $600 more in my savings account or $600 more against my mortgage or $600 more towards investing and buying more shares for myself, which is my long-term long growing passive income streams. I also get to learn a lot about myself during Frugal February. I learn actually that I'm not someone who's, you know, I've moved on from being frugal as my financial situation has improved and grown naturally over time by sacrifices and being committed and dedicated to the financial journey. I've realized that I've been able to let go of my frugal purse strings, so to speak. I allow a healthier balance and it's been really rewarding because it makes me realize how hard I've, how hard things were in the past and how much I've learned and grown and I can thank myself for all the hard work. So it's really nice to actually do Frugal February. You also get, when you do Frugal February, is you get to have a deeper, more meaningful understanding and insight into your budget. You get to really see where your cold, hard earned, precious money is going. And that is really, really important because if you want to get serious about your financial goals, the first thing you've got to do is go to your budget because that will tell you a lot about what you value. You'll be able to really see where your financial wastage is. And it's, this is the biggest thing. When you understand what your living expenses are, you can work backwards for, with that number and work out what, how much passive income you need to know, need to earn. So say for example, you work out that you are spending say $5,000 a month in living expenses. Now $5,000 a month is obviously $60,000 a year. Now that would mean that you need to earn after tax $60,000 a year. So you would think about your investing goals and your investment strategy and what I would call your mindful money number from my book, Mindful Money, is you would start to build a passive income that covered or more than covered your living expenses after tax. So say, for example, I'm going to use a really simplistic number of that 60,000. If we accounted for, say, $25,000 a year in income tax, that would mean your mindful money number that you want to build up over time is $85,000, obviously keeping into consideration tax rates changing and inflation and so forth. But that is by doing your budget and really having a deep, meaningful, beautiful connection with your budget that will give you the insight so you can really I guess, create, build and anchor some powerful financial goals in your life. And if you're listening to this and think, oh, I need to be doing this. I need to find out what my mindful money number is and start building my passive income stream. Make sure you go and grab a copy, of course, of Mindful Money, my book, which I wrote a couple of years ago. As I said, from doing Frugal February, I get to see where my money, my money goes and I can make some changes like that $50 per month savings. I could decide, OK, or well, great, I'm going to increase my mortgage repayments uh, which is automatically now buy an extra $50 per, per month or put an extra $50 per month in our emergency savings or an extra $50 per month in our investment accounts or our superannuation accounts. This is why doing a budget and doing Frugal February is it really makes it very, very easy for you. You also get from Frugal February to find smarter ways to actually save money. As you're looking through your expenses and you're looking at, you know, your, the bills, you might think, oh, hang on, can I maybe start cooking in bulk? to save some money. Can I start maybe taking my lunch to work maybe three days out of five to save some money? You start getting smarter with your savings. You start thinking outside of the square because you have this 28 day challenge ahead of you. It also really forces and encourages you to look at your expenses, as, as I said, and find smarter ways of achieving the same or better outcome. So say for example, you're someone who loves fashion. You might decide, okay, I'm going to maybe buy the same fashion, but I'm going to start buying pre-loved fashion from the circular economy. And that will save you between 30 to say up to 70% off the amount of money you would normally spend on clothes. Or you might decide, okay, I'm going to start uh, maybe ordering less home delivery and just keep it as something special for one time per week or one time per fortnight, or one time per month. And I'm going to be cooking in bulk and you know, taking my lunch to work. It makes forces you to really look at the efficiency of your money and savings opportunity. And as I said, it really gets you to see the true value of money. Think about it. 
it can if you're earning a certain amount of money and work out what how much you earn after tax per day and that might be might be say three hundred dollars per day after tax how quickly do you go and spend three hundred dollars it takes all day to earn that three hundred dollars say an eight hour day but then you can literally spend it in like 10 15 minutes even just at the supermarket because the cost of living is so expensive so it really gives you that sense of perspective and that i said is very grounding is very humbling to really kind of see where your money is at and see how easily things can get out of hand and how we can get distracted and led down a garden path particularly when we are in living in a world where we are surrounded by so much media and marketing and distractions and temptation we also get to realize is how quickly all those savings add up yes it does feel like sacrifices yes it does feel like you're with going without yes it does get frustrating and annoying but when you quickly and easily see how that five dollar coffee being skipped is $25 per week. If you just give up your weekday coffee, that $25 per week is almost a hundred dollars call it per month. Seeing that is very, very rewarding. And I'll explain to you how I make sure you stay dedicated and determined with this 28 day challenge. And as I mentioned, you get to find new frugal routines. Routines are really, really important with money. Routines, rituals, habits. It's probably, I think the most powerful way to organically achieve financial goals and to efficiently glide down your financial journey with joy ease and pleasure think about cleaning your teeth i love this analogy it just nails it so perfectly you do not think about cleaning your teeth morning and night i hope not you just do it i hope you clean your teeth morning and night if not maybe even after a meal you don't think about it it just happens so when you can set up the right habits routines and rituals where you almost have like a, a I guess a self-care self-worth um, honor of the process your financial goals are achieved so much more easily I don't even think twice about the certain savings in my life I don't even think twice about like reviewing and checking my budget I just get on and do it there's I don't have a, a really too many blocks in my life it it just I know the value of it I know how it's gonna make me feel I know that it's empowering it's gonna make me feel excited about and, and recharge my motivation and inspiration to achieve my goals so building a new routine a new ritual a new habit system during the month of February is great because you're really setting yourself up for success for 2023 with so much ease pleasure and joy it feels good achieving your goals and also as I said gets you to put, put things into perspective as to where you want to spend your money and what's important to you. Say, for example, you go to buy an item of clothing for say $200. Doing frugal February actually makes you stop and ask yourself, would I prefer that $200 item of clothing or would I prefer $200 in my frugal February account? Now, depending on what your living expenses and what your sort of benchmarks of how much money is and what's cheap and what's not, you might go, actually, no, $200, wow. I would much prefer that in my frugal February account or maybe towards my debts or, or somewhere else in my life. It gives you that pause, that moment where you get to go, hang on, hang on, back it up here. Let's just think about this before we click add to cart or we tap or swipe our card. Do Looking at this item, do I really want it or would I feel better about myself seeing more money in my Frugal February or $1,000 project savings account. That pause is very, very powerful. And we all know we don't feel good when we have a buyer's remorse moment. We buy something and we think, what was I thinking? What a waste of money. That We beat ourselves up. It doesn't feel good. But when we exercise self-control, we go, you know what? I'm going to think about that. I'm going to come back to that in a couple of days if I'm still thinking about it or come back to it next month or maybe I'll even wait until it's in the sales. It is empowering. It is as it's a little bit euphoric it's a bit of an aphrodisiac feeling oh wow look, go me i just said no and i'm now gonna have because i was about to spend 200 dollars on an item of clothing that i really realized i didn't need and actually probably have this plenty of the same of at home let's be honest we buy the same thing over and over again i'm gonna go now and transfer that 200 dollars i was about to blow and waste into my frugal february account and you'll see that account balance boost up by 200 dollars, which is a lot and you get to feel good and you, you get to own it and you get to be proud and you get to go, you know what, I'm going to do that again. I'm becoming, it's like exercising a muscle, it becomes stronger and easier to use next time. That is the beauty of Frugal February and what it gives us. 
And as I said, when I do this, I get to, and I do this all the time with myself, I'll go to look at, buy something online, I'll be like, oh, hang on, what I, my $1,000 project count is actually sitting at $800. If I didn't buy this item, I could put that money towards the $1,000 project and that would actually mean that I hit my $1,000 limit and it means I can then go buy some more shares. Yep, I would feel better about buying a thousand, being able to finally buy a thousand dollars shares, especially when you're going through like a quiet month or period. That's that serves me better. That excites me more. That gives me a high, a bigger high, a better high, and a more sustainable serving high. Isn't that better? All right. And now, this is just a little thing, but. Whenever I do frugal February, I lose weight. I not intentionally, but because I'm so guilty of buying snacks, muffins, chocolate bars, little treats, snacks are my love language. If I love, if I buy something for myself, I have to buy something for my family members and um, my nanny and Tom. Like everyone gets, you know, a little treat if I'm buying one for myself. That's my love language. So this stops that, and as a result, I tend to eat a lot healthier because um, I'm not buying that crap. All right, so basically, in a nutshell, Frugal February gives you greater insights and clarity into your living expenses, which can then allow you to work out your mindful money number, that is your passive income goal, and you can start working towards achieving your long-term growing passive income streams through whatever investment vehicle or strategy or products you want to use. And I talk about all the different ones in Mindful Money. You get to have a greater understanding and appreciation of your money and where it goes. You get to take back control and get you get you back in the driving seat and you feel so incredibly empowered, inspired and motivated, culling all those old toxic habits that have been sneaking up over the last couple of indulgent months that we've just had. All right, so how do you do Frugal February for yourself? All right, listen up and I'll put this in the in the podcast notes so it's easy to follow. Number one is to have a separate dedicated savings account. Now you don't need to necessarily go and open up a new account. You can use one of your existing ones, but the account balance must be zero and you must nickname it my frugal February account or my $1,000 project account, but it must be a ground zero. It must be zero because we want to see how quickly the money adds up. Whereas if you're going from an account balance that's got say two or three hundred dollars, it kind of blurs it. It doesn't give you that clarity and that true injection of motivation, inspiration that clarity gives you. So please just transfer that money towards a goal of yours or just get it out of there. You must have a zero account balance and you must nickname it so that you know exactly where you're looking at when you look at your online banking and you know exactly where to wire those savings each time you've discovered them on the spot with a thousand dollar project. You then go to your budget and you go through all your living expenses, you look at your, maybe if you use a credit card, um, you cross-reference everything and go back to a year's worth of data. Don't just go back a couple of months because that's misleading. Not all months are the same. We have Valentine's Day, we have anniversaries, we have friends' birthday presents, we have car red joes. Uh, it's very hard to think, you're going to set yourself up for failure if you only go back a couple of months. Try and do a really good, solid, thorough budget where you look at your entire living expenses. And look at what you can for the month of February, you can cut down temporary or cut out on a temporary basis. So for example, you might go, look, I can pause my gym membership for the month of February, which will save me $150, for example. And I can start going for runs in my local park, or I can do some exercise routines that are free on YouTube. And you might, you're just gonna pause it potentially for a month and you might, discovered by frugal February that you don't actually value your gym membership and you're happy just to do an online program. You might go, okay, I'm going to switch to a vegetarian uh, month and I'm going to save a lot of money on, on proteins like fish, fish and meat that can be very expensive. Um, so you might maybe quit alcohol. You know, you might think, okay, well, I spend probably about a hundred dollars a month on alcohol. I'm going to stop alcohol for the month. And that's an immediately hundred dollars savings. So you'd immediately transfer that into your thousand dollar project. You might make your coffees at home. Again, that's Gosh, if you buy a coffee Monday to Friday, $25 a week at least, like coffee's now expensive. So you might decide to make it at home. As I mentioned before, you might take your lunch to work and you don't necessarily have to do it every single day. You might decide to do it just three times a week. It's fine, but still that's 30 to $60 if you spend 10, between 10 and $20 a day on lunch at work. That's a lot of money that you can put towards the thousand dollar project, particularly over a 28 day period. You also may decide to change your social activities. So instead of catching up with a friend for breakfast in a cafe or going to a restaurant or a bar to catch up, you decide to go for a walk, which is free. Or you decide to go and have a coffee and spend five, $10 instead of 50, 60, 70, 80, or even more money. 
Uh, you might decide I'm going to use public transport more than, than say driving. Well, there are all these things you could do. And also you can look, go through existing stable, normal expenses, such as the boring ones like gas, electricity, Foxtel. You can go all your, you know, annual or monthly subscriptions. You can go through all of those and call up those providers and say, Hey, is there a better plan I can go on? Is there a fixed rate that might save me more money? Are there some, uh, product features within my service that I don't necessarily need that I can take down or pause um, to help save up some extra money. And I did this a couple of years ago and I, I do it actually every year. I call up Foxtel and say, hey, um, Foxtel's expensive. I'm thinking of cutting it. I might even tell a few porcupines that I'm gonna cut it. Uh, Tom would never let me cut Foxtel because of the sports channel who'd kill me. But I tell them I'm thinking of cutting it. And it's amazing the savings that magically appear They've where they've bought down my, um, my Foxtel monthly package by significant discounts, which is great. It also forces you, when you do this, to really think outside the square. So when you're doing Frugal February, really look at your living expenses and brainstorm as many possible ideas as possible to save money. The silliest, crazy ideas might be the biggest and best savings for you. So there's, it's have fun with the process. Now, every time you save money, and this is the, the rule you must follow if you want this to work for you and you want to, it will help with the dedication and commitment. And that is the moment you stop spending money or find an opportunity to save money, transfer the exact amount into your frugal February account. So say for example, I go to buy a muffin or a cookie or a um, cupcake. And I go, no, I can't, it's through all February. And I was just about to spend, say, $7. I must, on the spot, transfer $7 from my everyday living expense to my frugal February account. I must do that on the spot. You cannot leave it to the end of the day because you'll get tired, you'll get distracted. You may even end up blowing that money in, on something else. You must do it on the spot. So that is the rule. And that is how this is, you're going to quickly and easily see all the financial waste in your life. And you're going to see how all these... Um, savings quickly and easily add up and I'll tell you what as I said looking at that account balance grow each day at the end of each day it's gonna feel really really satisfying and you'll have a really good night's sleep I promise from doing frugal February now that brings me to my next step and that is you must look at your frugal February savings I get so passionate about this I get a bit tongue-tied but you must look at your frugal February savings at the end of each day as you go to bed so just log on to your internet banking on your phone and look at how much money you've got in there. And I want you to do the same in the morning. Yes, I know it's gonna be most likely the same, unless you're wiring money in the middle of the night while sleep talking and walking. I know it's gonna be the same balance in the nighttime and again in the morning, but the thing is, you in the morning your brain is so much more open and relaxed. Now by reminding yourself in the morning, by looking at that account balance, you're reminded as to what you're doing and you can get excited about it. And you might even come up with a new idea, okay? And by looking at it in the evening, you'll quickly and realize, wow, this is working. I'm excited and committed to this. And as I said, have all those savings and sacrifices do add up and all the wisdom and insights that come from doing frugal February, from learning how to say no, no spending. Now, you must, must, must not touch this money until the end of the month, okay? Now, it is up to you whether you want to spend that money on yourself, but... This is what I recommend you do with this savings. So if you want to really get ahead financially for 2023, you could put the lump sum towards your debt reduction goals. So it might be your mortgage or your credit card debt or your car loan or your personal loans, things that you toxic debt in your life that are making you feel crap about your life or yourself. Use that money as a lump sum extra payment to help make sure you pay that debt off even sooner and save valuable interest along the way. You might decide to transfer that money to your savings account. Perhaps your mission at the moment is to build up emergency money. You can use that six, seven hundred dollars that you save from doing frugal February towards achieving that goal sooner. You might maybe like me be putting it towards your investing goals, the, your one thousand dollar project. You might even be planning retirement and think, you know what? I just saved eight, nine hundred dollars from doing frugal February. I'm going to put that money towards my retirement savings, and that might be four hundred one k plan. It might be your UK pension, your European pension. It might be superannuation or your Kiwi saver, no matter where you are in the world. Or it might be simply a lifestyle goal, like a holiday. It's your choice. You, it's your boundaries, your rules. Now, as I said, I want to share a little bit about my insights for, the, for doing Frugal February because I'm up to year eight, so I'm a bit of a professional, diehard Frugal february -er, And I have a love-hate relationship with it, as I just said. I'm, as I say, more mindful than frugal to the truth. Because why I call the, wrote a book called Mindful Money. 
and I will be sharing as I go through Fugal February everything on Instagram. So please make sure you are following me on Instagram to see, and I'm gonna go hard this year. Uh, I'm, I'm going to look at everything that I don't just spend on money on my life, but I do in my life to save money. So please make sure you are following me um, on Sugar Mama TV on Instagram. And I'm really gonna be going aggressively and finding new and different ways that I've never looked at before. And I'm gonna be also building up a highlight. So if you miss my stories during the day, I promise to have a frugal February highlight. So you can click on that and see what I've been up to. And you'll during the end of the month, you'll see probably like 28 different ideas and stories to help save you money. So really exciting. Now, a um, couple of little things. I'm gonna, I have a hundred dollar per week budget to spend between Monday and Friday. So that's to cover if I'm out and about, grab a coffee on the run or pick up my dry cleaning or maybe buy a book or um, uh, like little things that I need like on the run in my life from Monday to Friday. So I'm gonna be really looking at trying to trim as much of that financial wastage there. I also have a budget of $100 per weekend, so that's my spending money on Saturday and Sunday. So the, again, not that I'm gonna make this a complete no spend, but there is potentially, if I did, $800 worth of savings that I can put towards uh, my frugal February account. Like, that's a lot of money. That's, that's gonna be almost a parcel of shares for me to go and buy. I'm also not giving myself a goal. Even though deep down I would love to try and save $1,000 uh, for this frugal February, I'm not going to. In my podcast that I published a couple of weeks ago where I talked about my New Year's resolutions for 2023, I've actually stripped back um, my rewards and I'm really trying to open up, I guess, the, my potential opportunities of success and make it limitless. So I'm not giving Frugal February a goal. Deep down, yes, I would be really proud if I hit $1,000, but I'm not going to just, if I set myself a goal of $1,000, I'm worried that I'll get to the thousand dollars and then give up or slow down as I approach the thousand dollars. I want to have a go at smashing a thousand dollars. So I want to keep that momentum building throughout the month. So, uh, yes, that's a, a kind of goal, I guess a thousand dollars, but I really want to try and be, keep my mindset in a limitless, um, space, if that makes sense. Now I do have boundaries in place and I do recommend you have boundaries in place because this frugal February is not about punishment or sabotaging or beating yourself up. So for example, I'm not going to be cutting any of my insurances by doing frugal February. Yes, that would save me a huge amount of money because uh, my life insurance, income protection, trauma cover, as does Tom. We have home and contents, we have pet insurance, private health insurance. I'm not cutting any of those, they're important. I value those, they are not to be that touched. I'm also not going to compromise healthy food. Yes, healthy food is more expensive than junk processed food. I'm not cutting that because that is good for my family. That gives them the right amount of um, energy, helps us all sleep well at night. We feel good about ourselves. It helps, stops us from, from getting sick, which actually ends up costing us more money in the, long, in the long run. So whilst I'm going to obviously look at my food budget, I'm not going to compromise on quality food. I'm also not going to compromise on my kids' routine. For example, they do swimming lessons that cost quite a bit of money. Actually, they do double swimming lessons at the moment because from COVID, they're really behind. So that is non-negotiable for me. I also have two, two social events, which I'm not compromising on. As always, it's one of my best friend's birthday in the middle of frugal February. So I am going to be taking her out to lunch as I always do. And that is in there. So I'm going to, I've already got money set aside to help pay for that. So it doesn't come out of my frugal February money at all. Um, I've also got a girl's, girl's, a mum's dinner. Now, I think there's about six or seven of us. Now, can you imagine how long it has taken for us to lock in a time to catch up for dinner when you've got seven, I think it's seven mums, all with kids and very busy schedules that all work? So it took us weeks and weeks. Like, I think it took us, we booked this in six or seven weeks ago. And I'm so excited. It is my, I, I locked that in. And again, I've got money set aside for this. Um, so I can go and spend money on this and not know that I'm jeopardizing frugal February. So I have some non-negotiables. And to be honest, my girlfriends, spending time with my girlfriends without my children around is great for my mental health. Um, and uh, it's also great for my connections with other people. So I don't want to compromise on that. So money is set aside. So if you have a couple of expenses coming up, social events like me, can I recommend you try and find some money elsewhere or pull that money out and have it set set aside for that particular day or event or gift or whatever it may be so it doesn't it's like a quick respite during frugal, frugal february but it doesn't jeopardize your success or your momentum um 
All right, so where am I up to? Um, all right, uh, so things like I will be doing some changes in my, in my social events. So I was supposed to catch up with Queenie. I am catching up with her, I should say. Um, that is investing with Queenie. We're catching up. Now, originally we were booked in to meet at a cafe and, and have a good chat. We've switched that and Queenie might be doing Frugal February with us. Um, don't quote me, but it is quite possible. And we've agreed we're going to go for a walk. We're going to do the Bronte to Bondi coastal walk instead of going to a cafe and spending money. And Queenie even said, she goes, I said, I can't catch up with you in a cafe or restaurant because I'm doing frugal paper. And she's like, it's fine. And I said, let's go for a walk together. And she said, you know what? I'm going to bring some snacks for us as well. So again, it's about coming up with different fun ways, still catching up with people, having that connection, having that bond, but it doesn't have to be about spending money necessarily. Um, and also like I've got, you know, Rocco's got a few um, play dates and catch ups again. I'm going to, instead of ordering pizzas, I'm going to make pizzas. Um, and it's all about also keeping in mind that we want it to be sustainable. And this is really important because in the past, I can get a bit angry and aggressive. As I said, frugal February can make me a bit of a bitch. And that is where I've gone too aggressively, too hard. And I've really, my headspace and mindset's been about punishing myself and making sacrifices that I, I that are too hard for me. So I want frugal February to be about sustainability. Uh, talking about not sustainability in the planet. However, there isn't definitely an, an element to frugal February and do that when you spend less. But about having sustainable energy and momentum and rhythm and doing frugal February so I can, I can actually sustain my energy throughout frugal February because it can be exhausting. You've got to be a lot more organized. You've got to really, you know, food prep, food plan, look at your social events. Um, you've also got to learn to say no. You've got to say to people, I'm sorry, I'm doing frugal February, which brings me to a next, my next point. And it's about being part of the community. Now, as I said, I would love, love, love for you to do frugal February with me. So if you're following me on Instagram and you do something that saves money, like you make your coffee at home or you are in a shop and you decide, no, I'm going to put that back. Can you please take a photograph of what you're putting back? Uh, hashtag frugal February and at sugar mama TV. So I get notified immediately and I can then share the love because every time you do something that's frugal, not only do you inspire me, but you inspire the 60 odd thousand people that are following me on Instagram. And it really does build an incredible flow on effect, a real, a ripple effect that really helps empower, inspire, motivate, everyday people around the world to be more frugal and mindful with their money. So you are very, very powerful on social media and I would love, love, love for you to be a part of this. Which brings me to another point. Okay, frugal February, my family members hate it when I do frugal February because I say, no, you can't have that. No, we're not buying that. We're gonna wait until we get home. No, you already have that at home. No, you can go without. No, you can wait. No, you can save. Uh, my um, I'm mentally preparing for a lot of meltdowns and tantrums and pushback from my children including Tom. So doing Frugal February, it's important that you tell the people around you that you're doing Frugal February. And a great way of doing this is actually inviting them to do it with you. Tell them what your, your goal is or what you're going to be doing with all the money that you save up from doing Frugal February. Because it's really easy to do Frugal February when you've got people around you on board doing it with you as well. It actually makes it really fun. You get to share ideas and you get to get bounced ideas and you get to brainstorm ideas. Actually, it was uh, my one of my best friends, Georgie from the Grace Tales, that actually gave me the idea of renting out my house on Airbnb when I was doing Frugal February in the past. So you never know what might be born out of doing Frugal February. So really own it and be proud of it. Explain why you're doing it. And as I said, anytime you do something that saves money on Frugal February, at Sugar Mama TV, so I can see it and share it. And of course, hashtag Frugal February. And you, you, I can't tell you, not, not, there is nothing silly. Um, when it comes to ideas of saving money, it all quickly and really adds up. And when you put yourself out there on social media, oh my God, you're so much more accountable. You don't want to let people down. You, you feel a healthy stress and pressure on your shoulders. But again, it's only going to benefit you because you have more savings in your account at the end of the day. Now, also, I recommend when you're setting yourself up to do Frugal February, um, have a look at your budget beforehand. So you've already got great insight and you can really launch into Frugal February. Make sure you write down as many ideas to help save money and do a hit list of all the people you're going to call to question your subscriptions or your services or your monthly amounts or your bills. Like I, I have on my hit list to call um, Origin Energy about our electricity bills and gas bills to see if there's opportunity to save money. So I've got a, a, a hit list or a target list of things I'm going to go and explore to help save money. And as I said, you must transfer that money on the spot. And I have to say, 
It's about having fun. I know you're going to feel frustrated and exhausted and tired during this, but when you look at those savings add up during the end of the night, it's actually really fun. And you discover so much about yourself which is really important, especially this time of the year if you've got some big goals that you want to smash or slay as the new word is. And as I said, whilst the savings are great, it's actually the insights, the personal growth and the wisdom that are the really the, the real prizes from doing Frugal February. All right. OK, so that is it for this podcast. Um, as I said, it's my goal um, is or my reward behind this is really going to be feeling good. I want to get to the end of Frugal February and know that what I've saved was a limit, limitless amount. I didn't cap myself or hold myself back by having a particular goal. But my reward is actually feeling good, feeling proud of myself, feeling more empowered, feeling more insightful about where my money goes, feeling responsible and wise and in control about where my money really goes and knowing that I'm happy with our budget. We've got nothing there that's wasteful or silly or squanderless in our life. We've got the basics, what things that we value and we prioritize well-being in our lives. That really great feeling that comes from being in control with your money. All right, um, I'm going to love you and leave you. Enjoy the week ahead. Please let me know if you're doing Frugal February. I'm so incredibly inside, excited. I'm even going to try and convince Michael Thompson from my podcast that I do with him, How Do They Afford That, to see if he will join me in doing Frugal February. So wish me good luck. All right, everyone, let me know how you go. Please leave a rating and review for this podcast. And of course, make sure you're subscribed and following this channel. Sure, mamas. Bye.